So I'm going to start this session talking about the elbow specifically. Obviously, we're talking about both joints here, the elbow and the wrist. It sort of depends how you define the wrist, actually, as to whether it's one joint. We're going to treat it as one today. Now, what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to address this little joint here. Of course, we know it's an elbow, but do we also know that that elbow is a hinge joint? Let's make that absolutely critically clear. This is a uniplanar move through one plane. This is... Um, uniplanar hinge joint. Okay, so it's quite a restrictive movement. And I also want to st stress that we have three articulating bones. So bone number one is we have the humerus. That's this long bone up here, okay? Basically the upper arm bone. We have the second bone, which is on the uh, thumb side of the forearm here. This is the radius. So remember that the radius is on the thumb side of your forearm. This is actually looking at the, the back of the body. Just make sure you're clear about that. And then, of course, what that leaves is we have this bone here, which is on the pinky side of the forearm, and that bone number three is the ulna. So we are talking about three articulating bones, and it's really, really important to stress this. Now, the other thing to say here, of course, is because it's a hinge joint, effectively, this joint can both go through flexion and extension. So let's be clear, with flexion of the elbow, which, of course, we would be talking about the elbow essentially moving in this direction here, flexion at the elbow, what we need to stress here is that our prime mover, our prime mover for flexion at the elbow is going to be the bicep brachii. So just to be clear on this one, what we would find here, double I of course, what we find here is that the muscle that's on the front of the arm would effectively connect down onto the radius and when it pulls upwards, it flexes the elbow like this. So think about your bicep curl. Think about, for example, um, uh, drawing your arm back for a, uh, for maybe a, a hook punch in boxing or something like that. We've got the prime mover as the bicep bracket. Now, of course, a muscle needs to lengthen and allow that to happen. It needs to work as the antagonist. So, of course, our tricep bracket for elbow flexion act as the antagonist. So it's really important. So we've got here, we've got PM, prime mover or antagonist. And here, I think that was my color, we've got our antagonist muscle here for flexion at the elbow. Now, of course, if the elbow comes back in this way, effectively goes through extension, that extension, of course, is a different model. We'll look at some examples in a second, of course. So here's our extension. This is now the straightening of the elbow. Well, we find here that the prime mover now becomes, let me see if I can find the right color, now becomes the tricep brachii. So for elbow extension, the tricep brachii is the prime mover and the antagonist, of course, switches to be the bicep brachii. And I just want to sort of reiterate here the crucial nature of this antagonist muscle. You might think, oh, it's not doing anything. If that muscle does anything else whatsoever in contractile format, there is no possibility of the movement that we're describing. So it is essential that the tricep relaxes and does not um, generate a force or pull, a, a, a apply a force to the ulna because that allows the bicep brachii to pull on the radius and cause that flexion and vice versa with extension. So we sort of see it as nothing happening, but actually it's a really, really important phase. Now, I just wanna reiterate a point here. Can I just stress to you that the bicep, the bicep brachii, if I just put the BB, this inserts onto the radius. Now this becomes really important when we look at things like levers. Whereas the tricep brachii, this inserts onto the ulna. So make sure you've got that clear because we're gonna come back to that when we get into topics, especially on levers. Now, a couple of examples, first of all, I've got my football throw in here. Of course, what we've got now is we've got elbow flexion has occurred here, right? Let me just get rid of that. Don't want that in the way. How has that happened? Well, that has happened through the bicep brachii, which inserts here on the radius and effectively it's pulling in that direction and it has flexed the elbow. When this person now throws the ball, maybe they move their, uh, their arms into that position with the ball up here, look, what's gonna happen there is that the tricep brachii is going to pull, it's pulling there onto the ulna, it's gonna pull in this direction, and of course it's gonna cause extension of the elbow to, to propel the ball forward and to launch the ball perhaps into the penalty area, whatever it happens to be. So that's a really important point. And I also wanna address what we've got here as our um, sort of our press-up push-up example, okay? So if we consider, 
A slightly different case now. If we consider the downwards action, so let's look at the downwards action now. This is where our knowledge of types of contractions will become useful. Now, I don't know yet whether you've studied types of contractions, whether you've done that tutorial or not. It might be one that you've got coming up or one you've covered recently. So the way this works is slightly differently. Obviously, as we move down here, the elbow is going into a flexed state, of, okay, as we're lowering downwards, lowering, right? Would you agree with that? I think you would. Now, generally speaking, we would then assume that the prime mover of that motion, of course, would be for elbow flexion, would be the bicep brachii, right? However, in this particular case, the tricep brachii on the back of the arm there, it's inserting down on the ulna, just on the point of the elbow. What this is doing is it's under tension. So this is the tricep brachii, it's under tension. It is lengthening, okay, not shortening and it is the prime mover. In other words, a muscle can be the prime mover for the opposite movement pattern if it's going through a lengthening under tension contraction. Now we happen to call that an isotonic eccentric contraction. Now again, if you haven't studied that, that is something you're going to come to if you have obviously you know what I'm talking about already. But here, the tricep brachii is the prime mover for elbow flexion because it is acting as a break in lengthening under tension effectively to stop this person's head from sort of colliding with the floor, right? So they don't just collapse under their own weight. Now, we also want to have a look at the wrist. So just a bit of a reminder, first of all, in terms of the wrist, let's make sure we've got our articulating bones. Well, we know that this forearm bone on the pinky side, we know that is the ulna. We just looked at that a moment ago. We know, for example, that this forearm bone, which is on the thumb side, we know this is the radius. Now, do we know that these bones collectively, if I just sort of put this one in here, these bones collectively, these are referred to as the carpals. So articulating bones are our radius, particularly our radius and our carpals, and our radius are on our carpals. Now these joints are what we would refer to as condyloid joints. Condyloid joints, okay, condyloid joints. So not hinge, but condyloid, really important that we stress that point. And I wanna stress specifically that this, different color, this joint here, is a condyloid, and we'd refer this to, refer to this as the radiocarpal, and this this joint here, which we'd refer to as the metacarpophalangeal um, uh, joint. These are these joints here are both condyloid. Okay, so no matter which way we look at it, these are condyloid joints. Now, I want to talk to you about two movements of the wrist. First of all, flexion. Flexion of the wrist is when the wrist moves in this direction. Effectively, the fingers of the hands go closer to the inside of the wrist. Which muscles bring this about? Well, we've got our prime mover and we've got our antagonist. So our prime mover for wrist flexion, very conveniently, are the wrist flexors. That's kind of helpful, right? And if you want to be aware of what they're called, they're called the flexor digitor of the superficialis and the palmaris longus. I'm not going to write them down, but you can you can go and study that if you want to. They've got individual specific names, but we're going to refer to them as the wrist flexors. And the antagonist, very handily called, are the wrist extensors, the wrist extensors. Of course, if we switch this and we start to look at, not flexion, James, what are you writing? We start to look at um, extension we effectively get the reverse pattern, right? So our wrist extensors become the prime mover, no surprise there. And of course, our wrist flexors, and this, by the way, this would be sort of bringing sort of your fingers towards the outer part of your wrist. It's that really sort of hard thing to strain your wrist back. It's, think about the preparation phase of a cricket bowling action, for example. But for extension, the wrist flexors become the antagonist. They allow the movement to happen, okay? So that's where I'd like to sort of stress that here. I thought I had an image down there, but, but I don't. Anyway, I hope that's useful for you and allows you better understanding of the elbow and wrist. Thank you.